I normally start with this uh, this picture because uh, uh, not many foreign people will know this, but this is quite famous in the Netherlands. It's called Holle Bolle Gijs. And um, what it does, it asks you for a piece of paper, and when you present it to him, it will suck it in. And after you, uh, after he sucked it in, he will say thank you very much. And this is basically what gaming is all about. First, you challenge somebody, he or she does something, and then you give him a reward. So gaming is not really that difficult. Uh, this is a very nice uh, um, uh, a quote, what I think a game could be. It's a voluntary attempt to overcome unnecessary obstacles. And of course, this is also not really new. So uh, the whole gaming industry is like uh, uh, what my former uh, speaker was saying, it's not really new. Uh, we play from the moment that we're born, we play together. Playing is a very, uh, very normal part of our life. And um, the good thing about playing is that it's active and result-driven. So apart from the, the normal things we use to learn and to educate, it's active and not passive. And that's one thing uh, yesterday Ben said, uh, the good thing about gaming is that it makes things fun. But I really, really like to stop only to talk about the funification of life. Uh, because I don't think that the, the real uh, power in gaming is the fact that it's fun. Of course, fun is one of the facts, but there are many more. One of the things is the challenge. Um, a good game challenges the player. So this is really important that you, as a player, feel challenged and that you are the hero in the game that you're playing. Most of the times we develop games, the player's not supposed to be the hero. It's about the content, it's about the institute, but we think it has to be about the player. The, the, the clip we saw this morning uh, from Jurian, if the guy standing in the middle doesn't feel a hero, he really doesn't want to be there. Um, and the other thing that's really important is that you have to feel that you are in charge in the game. You need to feel that you can control the game and that you know what to do, when to win. And in classrooms, we could ask ourselves the question, uh, who's the hero here? and who's in charge. So this is really a big difference between gaming and the more traditional form of education. There's another thing that I think is really important when you think about gaming, and that's that the game is a, is a safe place where you could experiment. And research has shown that while playing games, 90% of the time we're playing, we're making mistakes. And if you would compare this to our uh, uh, educational situation, uh, 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 how, f how feel do you free to experiment? And one thing is, this student, didn't he make any progression? So I think gaming is about uh, uh, showing that you made a lot of progression and this is really what stimulates you and uh, stays you connected. So it's not about fun. Uh, this is a theory from a Hungarian uh, 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 a researcher, I'm not going to pronounce his name, and it's about flow, and we think as game designers that a good game has everything to do with flow. So it's the balance between frustration and boredom, and a good game brings you directly in the flow channel. And that's also one of the reasons why people really want to uh, put a lot of effort into gaming, because a good game brings you into the flow, and then it knocks you out, it knocks you towards frustration, and you want to go back to this feeling that you are in control, you are the master of the game. So you really put a lot of effort and a good game brings you back into the flow, gives you a good feeling again. And this is the game we play with the player. So if you, if you think about making a game and what, what are the things you should think about? Well, first of all, why do we want a serious game? Please don't do it because it's so popular. Please do it because it's really useful. And why uh, is a game useful? First of all, it's an active approach on learning. Second of all, it's a safe place to experiment. Then there's a, it's a nice place for personal reflection. If you play the game and you try to win, and you try to adapt your winning strategy all the time, you are reflecting your own behavior. And this is unique. There are not other uh, uh, learning methods that do that. Maybe a training, a physical training, but most of the e-learning stuff doesn't really do that. And it can be a part of the permanent 
uh, a, a learning strategy, and I'll come back to that a little later. There's another question that you really should ask yourself, and this is how are we going to use the game? Because in a lot of organizations, I see the people saying, yeah, we want to have a serious game. Why? Yeah, because we need to have a serious game. And how are you going to apply it? Well, we don't really know yet. Well, you should really think about it. Are you creating a context for learning? Is the game used to create a context for learning? Or are you trying to make it relevant? If you have tried to win a game, the information you use to be a winner is relevant to you. So learning becomes relevant. Or maybe you want to use peer learning in a sort of a social game. Or uh, uh, you want to have endurance when you have games that are for uh, uh, relearning stuff and uh, 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 so you can have endurance in the game. So those are many of them. You can use them as a coaching tool. And you really have to think before you are going to develop a game, think about how you want to apply it. Because that it's a game, it's not enough. You really need to think about that. So this is also an interesting one. Uh, uh, because most of the uh, people talking about serious games are really talking about simulations, and there's a big difference between a simulation and a game. From my perspective, in a game you play with reality. Uh, and the fact that you play with the reality helps you to focus on the learning target. Uh, if you go to a flight simulator and you want uh, somebody to pay more attention to a certain uh, a th step that you need to do, and you have to do all this in the simulator. You have to do a lot of extra stuff because you want to make it realistic, and then it's not really time efficient. So if you step away from the simulation and say, okay, we play with reality so we can focus on certain things, then there's room for education. The other thing that's really important if you start to make a game is get the right team. Uh, within your organization. We need all the experts. We need them so we can interview them, so we can go really in depth about stuff that you want to, to, uh, uh, to uh, learn, the things you want people to play with. So really get the right team, very important step. Uh, we need the experts like you need us. There's another one that's really, really relevant, I guess, and that's the fact that the game is not a product, it's a service. It's like the mailman going in the winter, even when it's snowing, it's not a one-off. Don't bring a game into your organization as a one-off. Realize that if you introduce gaming, you are making a strategic step. That's what Ben also said uh, yesterday. And I totally agree with that. So it's not a one-off. If you just want to have a little game for one time, please uh, uh, don't. So uh, uh, creating a game is building a relation. Another thing is that you really not need to talk your IT as soon as possible because they can be angels or they can be devils. Um, and they are a key uh, a success factor in your project. What about the player? Well, first of all, really know what your player is, who or she is. What do they like? Ask yourself, what do they like? Why should they play? What's their personal reason uh, to play? Uh, the other thing you should ask yourself is, uh, what can they handle? How much of the interaction, how much of the complexity that you're going to send to them and that you're going to share with them uh, can they handle? So what we do is we try to make personas. Really think about people that are going to play your game and think them through and uh, make the persona so you have them in mind all the time. Another question you should ask yourself, because most of the times when you're introducing games, you want people to learn. It's you want something from them. And the one th the other thing you really should ask yourself is what do they gain from playing? Just fun is not enough. So uh, you want them to play, they don't want to play. So think about it, very important. Where do I fit in daily life? Uh, one of the things I always hear is that, yeah, we want people to play voluntary, but they need to play voluntary. So uh, think about that, how does it work? So uh, where do we fit in? And uh, what other activities will get less attention? One of the things people bring in and they say, yeah, we want you to make a serious game, but they're not allowed to play for more than 10 minutes a day. There's a contradiction there. So uh, really think about that. And uh, 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 is there room for multi-hours of gameplay within your organization? 
Um, oh, well, this should also pop in, so now we have them all at the same time. The other thing you really think about is what is the experience I'm trying to give to the player. Is it an immersive gameplay where you go into the game like the shooters and where you play for hours and hours and you, and you change your brain, what we saw yesterday? Or is it more a casual gameplay where we use the game that you play it more often but in a short time? So uh, it's easier to implement within your organization. Is it event driven? So we have a big event and we all wor uh, work towards this climax. Or is it continuous? Are we playing all the time? We need to think about it. Is it a solo or is it a social game? Uh, uh, is it serious or hilarious? So all these things we need to think of before we start making a game. And you should do that because uh, uh, it will help you to implement it. And then again, from feeling a hero to being a hero, uh, how is my player successful? Uh, does he only get points? Or uh, does he help a team? Is it a social game where you play together? Or can we win prizes? So think about how can my player become uh, successful? And progression then of course is one of the most important. The other one is you really need to love your player. You need to know everything about him. So uh, uh, collect as much data as possible. Bring it in and give it back to us so we can change the game, we can make the game better. So it's not about only about the validation of the effect, but it's also about the power of play and that you really can help your game to connect to the players and to bring them in the state of flow. To the product. Uh, <laughs> I tried to find a catch a fruit game uh, yesterday. Uh, uh, it was quite difficult. This is one. And uh, please don't force us to make this. Uh, if you don't have the budget, please don't make a game. I think it's really relevant because sometimes people come into my office and they say, yeah, we are all about serious gaming and we want to make this big game. It's really beautiful and we're going to make this big effect. Big effect. Uh, uh, and then they have 10,000 euros and, and that doesn't really work. So be serious about uh, uh, if, you want to, uh, if you want to have a, a game. And this is one that I really like and this is you should have a product strategy. If uh, Apple would bring out the iPhone, the latest version, now to the market, it would never be a success. I think they had much steps ahead. They really thought about the product and they adopted it uh, through use. And this really gives you, as an organization, uh, a lot of uh, uh, time to think about and to evolve your game and to evolve your product and evolve your player. And it also gives you space, if you came up with this brilliant idea, but you can't do it now, maybe we can do it in the next version. So it also gives a lot of space to keep on thinking about the uh, possibilities of the game. My last slide is uh, keep it simple at first. That's one of the things that I can see going wrong, is that you want to have so much in the game. There's so much to do and so much to learn and there's so many nice things to do and we all want to put them in level one. Uh, and then this is the interface for World of Warcraft. Uh, believe me, if you start with this interface, first level, the first time you log in, you will never start playing the game. So really think about, keep it simple at first. And then, uh, so, then there's my last uh, slide. You are an expert, so are we. So let's cooperate and make uh, beautiful games. Thank you very much. <laughs>